Imagine the hands meant to care you getting drenched with your blood. Such was the fate which one-year-old Rashid had to go through. We will uncover the whole story before you and see what forced this couple to commit this brutality and what was the consequence of their actions. In the month of November back in 2020, a young couple decided to end the life of their child. Reasons were unclear and there were speculations all over the place. When we looked into the history, we realized that the case in hand had a long history of the Child Welfare Department getting involved multiple times. If that is the case, it is safe to assume that there was already a threat present about the life of the young boy. The fact is that after all such investigations, the boy was later reunited with his parents. But what is the cause for it? Question remains the same. Rashid, as a matter of fact, had spent quite a lot of his life in foster care. When he was reunited with his parents after all that the authorities suspected was happening with him, the authorities were still not happy with the way things were going. And the suspicions were true because the same year he turned a year old was the year when Rashid was found dead. So, what was happening within the four walls? Why were the parents least bothered about their child? And why did they hate him so much? Rashid was found dead in his bead in the morning at around 10.28. When the first responder found him, he was foaming out of mouth, nose, and had thrown up. It is said that the mother panicked and she had no clue what to do about the situation. The weird part, however, is that the police were not contacted until 11.51 a.m. So, the mother waited for over an hour before she actually reported the matter to the police. The matter sounded worse and more heinous when the autopsy reports came out. It was found that the child was suffering from multiple fractures. Imagine... All of this just around the age of one. Rashid had old and recent fractures in his skull and healing rib and femur fractures were also a part of the injury list on Rashid. It was clear that Rashid had quite a painful death. With the pain having started days ago through the active torture he was inflicted with, according to the officials, the case should be handled as a homicide. It was also found that one of the child welfare case managers had asked the couple to take the child to a doctor since the injuries were serious. It was found that no x-rays were taken despite all of the issues the child was facing. But that's not it. It was later revealed by the mother that the child also faced two seizures in the past month. So if you heard what we just said, the child was not only unfit physically, he needed support in almost all steps of his life yet the child was left out at the mercy of his own sustenance. Now, despite the fact that the mother seemingly was cooperating with the police, there is another side to it. During the investigation, it was found by the police that the mother had sent a message to her sister where she admitted that she was beating Rashid. Now, the injuries which he had sustained, was it because of these beatings from his mother? A fact amidst all of this is that the child welfare system, social service departments, and other wings in America are currently overwhelmed with the high number of cases being reported, almost on a daily basis. So the question that arises is, was it wrong for the authorities to allow custody back to such parents who have proven to be child abusers? This is where protests started questioning the prudence of the authorities handling the case. The fact that Rashid had to become a victim of a failed system fails us altogether as a society. After the young boy died, it was found that the couple had over 20 complaints of child neglect and abuse on them. All of those complaints were within a very short span of 22 months. This highly indicates the extreme possibilities of the parents having beaten the child up for causes unknown. And do remember that Rashid himself was just a year old boy. All of this happened when he was alive. The 22 months that he was alive for were the ones with extreme pain and continuous discomfort. Now, Rashid's mother, Jabora Davis, instead of feeling bad for the injuries she had caused on the kid, would brag about it to her sister. The responsible people for Rashid's death will probably not only be the parents of the child. Chances are that there will be allegations of mishandling and negligence on the authorities who handled the case when it was first reported. Despite the fact that the parents were arrested after the death, they continued to plead not guilty to all charges that were pushed against them. As per the reports that the doctors gave after the autopsy, the cause of the death was clearly the neglect of injuries sustained by the child and the prolonged abuse of him. It is a fact that a child's skull, especially around the age of one, is the most sensitive part of the body. This is the time when the skull starts taking shape and is being strengthened. 
It is a process and it takes time, time which poor Rashid never got. It is sad to think that we have parents like Jabora who take credit for all the pain they cause their children. While we see parents who would do anything for their kids, we have parents like Jabora who would do anything for their kids to satisfy their superiority. An interesting aspect of all of this is the involvement of Rashid's father. There have been no reports of the dad committing the same crime against his own son. However, the fact that he did not take the child to the doctor leaves scope for doubt for him as well. Rightfully so, the police did take Rashid's father, Christopher Bryant, into custody as well. Both were charged with manslaughter and aggravated child abuse. They were also charged for negligence, which rose out of the 16 times that the Department of Children and Families warned the couple about the condition of their child. That's not it. The mother was not ready to accept all she did to her child for a long time until the case ended. Till then, she tried hiding the real story and explaining Rashid's broken leg by making up a story about Rashid falling from the bunk bed. However, there were multiple stories that came out of her. Everything was then sorted out when the message from Jabora's phone was found by the police. The quantum at which events were taking turns in this case is massive. When you hear about the death of a child as young as a year old, chances are that we look into the possibilities of accidents, health complications, and so on. Never do we think of a case where the child was brutally killed by someone, let alone the child's own parents. While the media demanded the files, which contained details about Rashid, they were refused access by the DCF. Yet again, this leads us back to the question we had. Is the DCF trying to hide something as well? The duo were held without bond for quite a long time. The injuries were clearly pointed out as a result of bad parenting. While the couple kept neglecting all charges, the truth was quite visible to the judge. The issue with the case was that it was a bit hard to determine the case beyond reasonable doubt against the parents. There was a huge delay that was caused as a result of that. Even when the authorities asked Derry about Rashid's broken leg, despite the fact that three different stories came out of her with certain evidence against her on her mobile phone, there were no criminal charges against Derry. This was perhaps one of the biggest flaws shown by the authorities. It was necessary for them to ensure the child's safety first before handing the child over to the parents. In such cases, there is a procedure that the authorities are to follow. However, in Rashid's case, it was noticed that there was a lapse in it as well. The case is a bit more complicated than it already is right now. Did we tell you that the couple had a total of eight kids? Oh yes, we missed that part out, didn't we? Right after the case was unveiled, the state administration sought the custody of the other seven children that the couple had. They believed that it was necessary for their safety, and it pretty much rightly was. The kind of life little Rashid had to live is not something that any other kid deserves to have. With a lot of mystery behind their objectives, and the motive clearly not the benefit of the child, the case was determined to be one of the most ruthless acts within a family. So, who was at fault here? The parents? The authorities? Or was it just the kid's fate? Questions have no end.